After adding knobs and buttons to my custom desk build, many of you shared your love for tactile controls. I now bought an off-the-shelf product that has been the easiest. I've never used a macro pad that simple. And most powerful, I never expected this level of integration, control interface for my desk. I'm just hoping that it fits. I forgot I bought black. <laughs> it also comes in white and that's what I wanted. And I realized I'm just gonna pull it apart so it doesn't matter. But yes, I bought black. That is so cool to see on the cable. This is USB-C, but it's actually a 2.0 connection. So it maxes at 480 megabits per second. Oh, that's static ass. Get off my hand. That is a massive non-slip base. You don't wanna be like grabbing stuff and it like slide back really easily. Just plug it in. Stream Deck. I'm not gonna sign up for your emails. Just let me download the software. Crikey. Timer? What? Get out of here. That's actually sick. Before we explore the incredible things this device can do, we're gonna explore today's sponsor, NordVPN. See that? I just made a button open up, nordvpn.com slash camshared. We can get four extra months on a two year plan. And this button will open up the NordVPN desktop app. So now I can easily choose where in the world I want my internet connection to appear from. Now I typically use VPNs in reverse. So when I was in Taiwan, I ran a VPN on my phone back to Melbourne, Australia. So my apps and websites just function normally. When I wasn't on the VPN, Netflix blocked me from watching shows I wanted to and YouTube premium didn't allow me to cache videos before my flight. I had to be through a VPN to make that happen. As a nerd, I love that you can manually select the WireGuard based NordLynx protocol. Plus, as a Raspberry Pi user, I'm covered with the NordVPN Linux app. If we go back to nordvpn.com slash camshan, we can see that they also have NordPass, which is a password manager that will not only generate unique and complex passwords, but also alert you if it finds that your details are leaked in an online data breach. Now, you can try all this risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee via the link in the description. That's nordvpn.com slash camshan to claim your four extra months on a two-year plan. Thanks, NordVPN, for sponsoring today's video. Let's do two-second timer. Two, one. Oh, that was loud. I guess it just goes through your speakers. Soundboard, play audio. Nostalgia unlock. Wait, close. My Google Drive, I'm always having to go in and manually click like pause syncing. Let's tap Google Drive. Whoa, that was, that was instant. I'm pretty sure you can make multiple things happen one after another. Multi-action. And let's drag that in. Let's say I've made a new video for you, right? Drag action from the side. Oh, I'm getting chills. Website. My channel slash upload. Then close Google Drive. I'm gonna press upload. It closed Google Drive. Open up the website. Dude! I've never used a macro pad that simple. Oh, and I could just customize the icon. I'm just speed running this thing. I didn't read any of that. They've just got like a whole website here. You can just start making your own little graphics. Oh, I've just added so much to this. This is horrible. And it just instant downloads just the PNG. Now the key says, hello with a rocket. I'm nerding out. Multimedia, play, pause, excellent. So we could drag over here. Oh, Windows Media pops up. Play, pause, next track, previous. This is just too clean. Not only can you drag buttons in and out of folders, you can also simply drag and drop custom graphic files onto each button. And it's with this that I plan to make a folder full of colored tiles. Each would send a unique key press combo to be picked up by the software of my LED controller to change the color of my desk. They had something called like global shortcuts. Here it is, global shortcuts. All right, so we have blue and we have wave. Control shift F1 for wave. Control shift F2 for blue. It didn't do it. Oh no. This feature only works for Razer Synapse 3 enabled device inputs. Oh, so I need like a Razer keyboard. Are you kidding me, Razer? You can't have a listener? Reddit says I can't do it on a Stream Deck. Man, that's really disappointing. So that's not an issue with Stream Deck at all. It's just Razer trying to force you to buy more of their products to already use their products. But what I will do is enjoy the custom graphics for everything else. As with a typical macro pad, you have to memorize what each key does. And although you can buy some that have custom keycap sets with labels, they don't dynamically change when you change programs like you can with the Stream Deck Plus. That's right, you can actually change what commands display for whatever is the active program. 
And whilst these buttons are mushy, like a basic membrane keyboard, compared to clicky and tactile, like a mechanical switch, for me, I much prefer the added value of the screens on the Stream Deck Plus, including the touchscreen above the knobs. The knobs can be removed, and they are a standard D-shaped mount, so you can buy replacements from Elgato, or buy others online and mix and match with your devices. Multimedia, drag it down, action, volume. Oh, well that's very simple, isn't it? This is so cool, man. A knob hotkey. So an encoder is three buttons. You can turn it counterclockwise, turn it clockwise, or press. And so they've just literally given you that list as if it's buttons. They only have keyboard things here. There's no mouse, like scroll up and scroll down. You have page up and page down though. Like that's just real basic, but it's just so easy to do it. You can set the background image for the knobs to anything. They have a stack of stock ones. Wonder if I could make the blue the same as the desk. So when it's mounted, it looks like it's a floating screen. Discover a world inside your device. Plugins, I'm here for it. So Spotify, Get out of here. That's the native Windows volume mixer. There's a percentage on the touch screen. And so what I'm thinking, the finals, it's found it. Yeah, freaking big step size because this game is ridiculously loud. If I'm playing by myself, the game, I can now have it at 100. If I'm playing with my friends, boom, down to 20. I like that you can adjust how much of a percentage it does. The Spotify one is way more fine tuned. Oh, if you tap it, just mutes that specific one. So I press the button too. Oh, so I can mute the independent Imagine Zoom if like everyone's voice is a little bit too loud. Nah, man, this is good. Digital mixer included, unlock wave link. It installs a bunch of virtual inputs and outputs. So I can set an input as the microphone, turn on my Bluetooth headphones, and then I should be able to set the monitor mix to my headphones. And the stream mix you'll send to your live streaming software like OBS and Streamlabs. But to take it to the next level, you can actually define which virtual output each program on your computer sends this audio out to. And it's with this, you're then able to have a knob that will control game audio because you just set for your games to send it to that virtual output. And not only can you independently control the volume for each output, you can independently control how much of each input source each output gets. This is insane. But then I found Byradar made a free plugin on the marketplace that allows you to control voice meter with the knobs on the Stream Deck. Mate, I would have bought this thing years ago if I had known that I could control voice meter with it. If you haven't seen my previous videos where I talk about voice meter banana being the virtual soundboard that controls all my speakers, microphones, and the output to my tactile transducer amp in the bass shaker chair. For me, I never expected this level of integration. It's too good. It's too good. It really is the integrations or plugins from the marketplace that makes this stand out. You've got first party options like PowerPoint for presentation specific controls or Discord where you can drop into a specific voice channel on a certain server with a single button press and then drop out. And then there's ultra nerdy stuff like wind tools from Bar Radar where you can like toggle Wi-Fi, connect to a specific Bluetooth device, restart a certain service on your computer. I've used this for its incredible default audio device button because every time I plug my webcam in, it takes over my mic. And so now I've got a button to set it back to my main microphone. Heck, let's actually just break down my current setup. So the new task button does a keyboard combo that pops up the new task entry form for my calendar manager. The calendar button does a keyboard combo to open said calendar manager. The upload button does our multi-action script to close Google Drive and then open the YouTube upload page. And the project button runs a custom script that I wrote that asks for a project name and then renames files and folders for every project. I'll drop the GitHub for that below. We then have a 30 minute timer, a folder full of old clocks, a folder for default audio devices, as well as an auto detect volume mixer, which lets me have a volume knob for any program that's running. And then simply a button to launch Spotify, where I also have a dedicated knob, a knob for the virtual volume of my microphone, and then a knob for the active window. So this will change depending on what program I'm in. And then with the clock, if you twist it, it actually starts a countdown timer. I do, however, wish that you could change the sound of this when it gets to the end, like you can on the button timer, because it only does a bip. Elgato, please add this. And although you can have 10 different pages, I only have two. And we just have to swipe on the touch screen to access that second page, where we can drop into a Discord channel, launch certain games, view CPU percentage, and open Discord. But all of that is useless if this doesn't fit in my desk. No screws behind the sticker. Power solo. Nice. 
feels like bent metal around the PCB to hold it in place. The knobs are screwed in, but the buttons are bent. It's metal. I mean, the truth, that's your fit. Oh, I don't even need the calipers. I can just simply sit it face down. You can see the circuit board is shorter than the gap in the panel. Oh, I'm so happy this is gonna fit in my desk. If I was to really nitpick this thing, using the knobs for system volume has more lag than a macro pad or keyboard that straight away sends system commands because it seems input from the stream deck has to be converted by the software into a system input. Like we're talking milliseconds, but I noticed it. And it's also fixed at this 45 degree angle. You could 3D print brackets, make your own stands, but oh, I did not expect to love this as much as I do. The Stream Deck Plus is actually a year and a half old device. Elgato has probably done a lot of firmware updates and software package plug-in releases for this. And so I'm a real happy customer buying this in 2024. Uh, I got it for 239 Australian dollars on an Amazon deal. I think the retail is 200 US dollars. 339 is the Australian retail. Custom knobs and buttons out the box. What more could you want? If you like this video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it so you don't miss us adding this to the desk. We have three things now. If you've been following along, they'll go into this panel so it's not blank. That's it. Thanks for watching. I could just do a page full of timers. Oh, this is gonna be chaos. Jeez! <laughs> the last couple. Oh, I'm having so much fun with this thing. I should have bought this a long time ago.